Hey, welcome back to the Jack Chapel Show. And today's video is kind of about how much money you can potentially make and like how to de determine that. Like how much money you can make through your business or through employment, whatever it may be, or through self-employment, wh whatever it may be, right? Maybe you, you like a nine to five job and like working for someone else. Maybe you don't, I don't know. So this concept is a Vrin score. I originally actually heard it through Ty Lopez, but uh, he didn't really explain it whatsoever. So I'm just gonna talk about what it is and how it relates to you. It's not really a, um, a de definitive way to determine how much money you're gonna make, but it's kind of like a, it gets you thinking a little bit here. So anyways, yeah, the Vrin score. So uh, make sure when I go through each of these, I'm gonna ask you a question and, or some questions, and you have to determine where you rank on a scale of zero or, or sorry, one to 10 or zero to 10 or whatever it may be. And I'll give you my score, what I think my own score is. Oh, I just touched the microphone there. Remember not to touch your chest, Jack. So what does the V stand for in Vrin? Well, that stands for value. So value, what does that mean? Well, it means what is the value of the service or work that you do or the service, yeah, the service you provide. It, you know, are, are you important, right? Are you, do, do people need your service? Stuff like that. Um, I'll give you an example. If you are unemployed and don't have skills, you are probably, you probably don't have that much value. Or maybe your product's terrible. So your product doesn't have value. So, uh, you know, a, a very low one is, you know, a, a one is like a, a one is like you're, you're unemployed, I guess. You're unemployed, excuse me. A three would be like you have a bad product or you're just like a bad worker. So like a bad product, but, but at least you're doing something, right? And uh, if, you're, if you're 10 out of 10, you're like the owner of a company, right? You're like Warren Buffett. So you're the owner of a company if you're a 10 out of 10. You, you have a lot of value, make big decisions, you're important. So 10 is kind of, value is how important you are. So me, I, I don't know where, I think that I would rank like a five or four. I'm a young guy, I haven't developed too many products right now, but at least I have content, right? So I, I put myself at a four, I'm pretty hard on myself too. So I put myself at a four just cause I always think that there's room for improvement. So I'm, I, I'll give myself a four here. At least I have something. And what does the R stand for in Brit? Well, R is rarity. This is, this more applies to the business end, I guess, but it kind of applies to employment. So how unique are you? How unique is your business? For example, um, I guess I have it written down here. Are you the only one with your set of skills in your area? So are you, if you're a, my girlfriend's a graphic designer. If she was the only graphic designer in the city that she lives in, she would be pretty rare, right? So that'd make, you know, it's a competitive advantage, I guess, to, for that. That's also what the Vrin score is about. It's about competitive advantage, I guess, but it also determines how much money you can make. It's a, it's, it's a, a giant way of summing up how much money you can make, I guess. So are you the only one with your set of skills? Um, are you the only business of your kind? So I'm trying to think of one off the top of my head. It's just like, if you are, I don't know, Microsoft in the early years, you were the only computer or only computer program software, I should say, right? Um, and then Apple came along and there was, you know, Linux and all those came along eventually. But for a while, you pretty much if you have a monopoly, <laughs> if you have a monopoly on an industry, you're, you're pretty rare because you're the only one of your kind. That's a way of thinking about it. Or if you're the first, like if you're, MySpace, you had a competitive advantage before Facebook came in. Then Facebook came in, kicked you out, and because everyone thought Facebook was better and all that stuff. If you're the only one of your kind, you are rare. So, um, I was, you know, I, I mentioned how my girlfriend, graphic designer in the city that she lives in, but, you know, a one on a rare would be if you have no skills or very generic skills. So, no or generic skills. So pretty much what you can do is hard labor, which most people can do, or maybe not even hard labor, just labor. 
Just, and that's it. That's all you can do. You know, that's genetic. You're not rare. Or if you're a, if you're a burger place in, in downtown New York, right? You're, you're not rare. There's a billion other burger places. So maybe your product's rare, though. Maybe your product's good. Maybe you have a different kind of burger, but it's still a burger. You see what I'm saying here? It's generally, if you aren't rare, you have to have good marketing. That's pretty much the way it goes. So, yeah, a one is like no skill, no, or it's generic skills or whatever. And like a, a 10 is, <laughs> I got this from Neil deGrasse Tyson, actually. So he is an astrophysicist. We're going to astrophysicist. Now, I wanted to be an astrophysicist. I actually got, before I went into health sciences, I actually got accepted to astrophysics um, at, a, at a very high university in Ontario. That's what I was going to be. It's going to be Neil deGrasse Tyson 2.0. And I was going to be an astrophysicist. And the funny thing about astrophysicists is that there are literally one, every million people in the world, there's one astrophysicist for every million people. So you're a one in a million if you are an astrophysicist and that is your job and your degree and you have all that stuff. So, or an astronaut too. We'll put an astronaut in there. That's a, that's a 10 out of 10 rare skill set that not a lot of people have. Astrophysicist. So moving on, we have I, we have, this is a tough word. I thought it was originally intimidable, if that was intimidable, but you know, uh, I didn't realize that wasn't a word. So, um, inimitable, that's what it is. in e mit a -bull. That's a, a word that not a lot of people have heard, but what it is, is how easily can you be imitated or copied? So I like to think of this as, let's just say you have a job, you are at a desk somewhere, and let's just say that if you were to take some random person off the street, how long would it take for them to learn your skills? It's very similar to the one coming up here, but how long would it take for them to be trained for your job is what I'm saying. How easily can they learn your skills, right? Um, so a job that a one would be a job that requires no training. So labor again. So so uh, no training. A three would be like a job where maybe you go in for two days and you learn everything and then you practice for a week and then you're good. So it'd be like I don't know. Uh, that's what a lot of office jobs are like. So three is like a, yeah, we'll just say office job, I guess. Excuse me, office work. And we'll put a 10 as, uh, what did I write down here? A 10 was something, oh yeah, something that requires years and years and years of training or learning every day, which is why I put Oh, excuse me. I put astronaut, but you can also say like Warren Buffett. He has so many, I'll never, unless I, I reach his age, I'm not going to know as much as he does about financials or business or the economy, right? He, he, it would take me years to make the decisions that he does, to make the a good enough, good or greater decisions than Warren Buffett. Excuse me. As good or greater is what I meant to say. And same with astronaut, like you, NASA won't just pick some random person and then in a month fly them up to the space station. They, I think it's two years of training at least, minimum. And if they're going to Mars, actually one of my, one of my friends is, or I guess friends, it's uh, my girlfriend's, it's a long story, a long connection, but he's uh, one of the finalists for the, for a trip to Mars. And I don't know if it's a NASA thing or if it's a private, SpaceX things, but I think it's NASA. I'm not quite sure. But he, he's like, he's gone through the four rounds of it. He's like in the finals. So he might be going to Mars. Weird, eh? Anyways, we have uh, N. N is, this is, it's a compound word here. This is called non substitute. Oh, substitute a bull. 
Is there an e in substitutable? No, there isn't. Okay. That's a compound word. I hate compound words. It's not a compound. No, it's not a compound word. It's a, what do you call these with the dash here with the hyphen here? I don't know. Okay. Anyways, how easily can you be substituted? So it's similar to the last one. Inimitable was how long would it take for a random person to learn what you have learned or to learn your skills or to learn your job. Non-substitutable means how easy is it for some random person to take a job? Just straight up. It's kind of similar to rarity, I guess, in a way. But yeah, that, that's what I like to think of it is. Like what are, could, could your employer or whatever fire you and easily find someone else at the same price? That, that's what non-substitutable is for me. So yeah, uh, how easily can you be substituted? Can you pick someone off the street, have them do your job? Um, so yeah, my example was, I can step into a McDonald's and take over a burger flipper's job, but they can't step into my job, which involves a lot of stuff, by the way. I know I have a lot of, I have a lot of different things I do. I can, see, my skill set's different. This is where I would rank pretty high. I would rank myself pretty high. Non-substitutable. So like I have extensive training and in practice at like 3D animation programs and like Adobe After Effects and Photoshop and tech skills and I'm in real estate and I can do all the marketing for that and I can build websites and I can, I can do personal training stuff and I, can, I have a health sciences degree with a min minors in chemistry, biology and I had three but you can only pick two and psychology. Right? So I can go do any of those chemistry, biology, psychology jobs, doctor job, I can go to med school, whatever. Like, I have a lot of skills, is what I'm trying to say. So this is where I'd rank myself pretty high. But non-substitutable, a one is, as I said, is like burger flipper, because anyone, almost anyone can um, flip burgers, like without training, right? Burger, actually, I shouldn't say that because I heard that uh, it does take about a couple days for McDonald's workers to actually get trained. And I know that because I work, I worked in the, uh, I work for someone who owns a lot of restaurants and they, it takes like, in his restaurants it takes a week because there's a lot of, you have to be a good cook. But at McDonald's it's like a factory kind of thing, right? So one shouldn't, maybe I should make a burger flipper like a three. And maybe just like a... Someone who rakes leaves for a living should be number one. I think that should be it. And then a 10 would be like, let's see, non-substitutable. I'd put astronaut up there too. That's pretty good, astronaut. <laughs> um, how about like, I don't know, uh, professional athlete. That's a pretty good one. You can't pick up anyone off the street and have them play in the NHL. So that's a good one. Professional athlete would be a 10. I'm not going to write that one down. But where would I rank myself? I think that uh, value, I'm about a four. Rarity, um, I don't have a lot of generic skills. I think I would rank myself pretty high, actually, for that. I'm, I think I, I'm pretty rare for that. I'll give myself a seven. I'm not an astrophysicist, but I do have a lot of knowledge that an astrophysicist has. Because I still have an interest in science, too. Inimitable, um, I guess I, for all my skills, man, uh, oh, that's tough. I'll give myself a seven because like, I don't know if I could train someone or all this, all the stuff I know, all the stuff I have to do. It would take, it would take probably a month or two months or more, probably more if you include all my animation stuff. So give myself a seven. That's a crappy seven. And for non-substitutable, as I said, I, I, I was pretty good with that. It's tough for someone to come up off the street and do my work on oh, the dog's barking right now so i'll give myself a seven here so on average i would say i think of myself pretty highly but i need to bring more value so now this is what you should do you should rank yourself here you can average your score if you want to so mine would be uh let's see doing some quick math here mine would be about a six roughly 6.2 i think something like that um yeah so what would what would yours be what would yours be would yours, would you be like a five? Would you be a six, seven? I don't know, you shouldn't, you, maybe you're an eight watching this. Maybe you think of yourself as an eight. I'm a six, and if you're watching, like I consider an eight like someone, you know, doing very well for themselves, like a CEO, and 10 being like 
Bill Gates. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, what this also does is it helps you realize what you need to work on. So what I realized for myself here, oh, excuse me, or, <laughs> is that I kind of have a lot of skills that not a lot of people have. That's what I learned from this, from these three columns here. It's, I am uh, important in terms of my sets of skills, but what I need to do is create something of more value here, which is what I'm going to be doing next. Um, creating products, programs to help people learn. That's what I'm going to be uh, doing next. So that's, uh, yeah, what's your weakest one? Leave a comment. What's your weakest one? What's your highest one? Remember to check out, if you want this in podcast form, by the way, check out my website, chapelrei.com. And you can get this in podcast form. It's on iTunes. I'll leave a link in the description. Also, go check it out on YouTube. If you want to see me write on a whiteboard if you're listening to this on podcast. So, anyways, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. You're all very beautiful people. And I'll see you guys next time.